life tonight coming to you from Hollywood Legion Stadium, scene of some of the greatest fistic battles in the past, Ralph Edwards! Thank you. Thank you. Bob, you did very well. You have a great future in this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we've got one for the books tonight, less than two blocks away from here, in a private projection room. It's one of the greatest fighters ever to enter the squared circle, waiting to view a closed circuit showing of a topical program of special interest to him. Now, you can see him now, I think, never dreaming that we have a hidden camera in that room. Who is this great fisticuff gentleman? Well, now, switch the TV set in projection room one, please. Hello, Jack. Jack, Jack Dempsey. Jack, look around. There's a camera behind you. Hello, Jack. Hey, boy. George, you... Jack, this is Ralph Edwards. <laughs> oh, thanks a piece. Of... You told me you were having a little fun with me tonight. Uh, did you? Huh? Jack, you're our main event. The preliminaries are over tonight. Former heavyweight champion of the world, the famed and beloved Manasseh Muller of the early 20s, William Harrison. Jack Dempsey, this is your life. Now, Jack, listen to me, pal. This is for real. If you don't believe me, ask your good friend there, Mr. W.C. DeVry, chairman of the board of the DeVry Technical Institute, who came all the way from Chicago just to help us get you in our ring tonight. How about it, Mr. DeVry? Well, Ralph is right, uh, Jack. It's going to be a great evening for you. And uh, incidentally, in the seven years that you've been director of student welfare for DeVry Technical Institute, this is the first time I've seen you with your guard down. Will you, Mr. DeVry, <laughs> and Max Axman there, and George Flory, two other good friends, hustle Jack over here to the Hollywood Legion Stadium and get him in his corner? <laughs> he must have squeezed him or something. And while we're all waiting very much, Bob Warren, are they here yet? Not yet. Ladies and gentlemen, especially you who love boxing, you're going to see the greatest of them all here in just about a second, Jack Dempsey. For you who have just tuned in late, we fooled him through the help of uh, Jack's good friend, Mr. W.C. DeVry. We brought him over to the NBC studios. Got him there on the pretext of looking at a film. Instead, my face came over, and now they're wa on their way over uh, by, uh, with police protection and kind of rushing. We're going to take you through the life of Jack Dempsey, ladies and gentlemen, one of the fantastic stories of all sportsdom. You're going to see the early days of Jack, how he came up from the beginning, how he fought his way to the top. And before the evening is over tonight, you're going to meet some of the greats from all over the world, some of the greatest fighters, great names that you ever heard about. Are they here? Yes, come on down here. Ah, here he is. The former heavyweight champion of the world. Always the champ. Jack Dempsey! Hello, champ! <laughs> Here he is! Here he is! Out here, Jack! Come up here, Jack! Right there's your spot there, lad. Oh! Now here comes, here comes the announcement for all of your uh, to be listening to, let's, uh, let's take Jack back to his corner. Thank you, Mr. DeVry. How are you, Mr. Waxman? Should we take him back to his corner? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, how about it there, George Flory? Ladies and gentlemen, the main event tonight, this you, you is your life. There. Jack Dempsey! All right, Jack, round one. Come out here and sit down. <laughs> here we go, round one. Face toward the cameras. Here's where all the opponents are coming from. Friends, really, now. Memories, now, of youth and of childhood in Colorado, in Utah. How you doing, Jackson? Champ, can you talk? Sure, sure. That a boy. Because it was a tough tough race over here, and this kind of catches people off guard. Uh, Manassa, Colorado. Where does the Manassa in <coughs> Manassa Muller come from? Colorado? Well, that, uh, that name was given to me by the late Damon Runyon. Called me the old Manassa Muller, kind of brought me good luck, and I kept it. That was where you were born, June 24th, 1895. The ninth of 11 children born to Hiram and Celia Dempsey. Your dad would move the family from town to town, right, Jack? Right. Wherever odd jobs or farm <coughs> opportunities come. Your mother, a deeply religious woman, taught you a maxim that was to guide you throughout your life. What is that maxim, Jack? Well, golden rule. Golden somewhere. rule. Believe in God, say your prayers, and don't be afraid to work. And keep a going. Keep going. That's what Mom used to say. At eight, you're baptized into the Mormon church. William Harrison Dempsey. They called you Harry in those days, didn't they? 
Right Could on. you be champ? Is Harry Dempsey as well as Jack? Well, I don't know, but I, I probably <laughs> do, but Jack suited me better, so I kept that name. At 15, you're a deacon in the church. By this time, Jack was already training hard to be a fighter, except more on Sundays when he'd be in Sunday school. Ah. Now, a boy who finished the eighth grade with you, Jack, at the Lakeview School near Provo, Utah, back in 1910, here still from Provo, your boyhood sparring partner, Roy Stubb. Coming down the aisle, right over here is Roy. <laughs> Come on back here, fellas. <laughs> you and uh, you and Jack used to spar together, is that right, Roy? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you sure did. You bet you did. Yeah, uh, we have. Uh, you went to Sunday school together, yeah, too, isn't it? remember the time uh, you used to come up the road and talk to the I certainly do, Roy. And I'd run and hide when I'd see you coming. <laughs> <laughs> you think uh, you were afraid uh, of me? <clears throat> and then you'd be coming up and doing chores to get me a box with you. That's right, Roy. It shows up to you, too. <clears throat> now, uh, you fellas, uh, uh, you went to Sunday school together, isn't that right, Roy? Yeah. You and Jack? Yeah, Jack, remember him. Uh, Jack, you stand up under this <coughs> microphone. Oh, it's a regular ring microphone, and to hear Roy, we'll have to get you right under here, too. Remember the first long pair of trousers you had, Jack? Well, I don't remember, Roy, no. <laughs> well, there was about six sizes too big for you. <laughs> they were? <laughs> yeah, and, and the one the boys down there made fun of you. Yeah, what did uh, Jack do about that? Oh, Jack, he took about three of them out and cleaned them up. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say anything after that, did they? No, they didn't bother him after From your boyhood, Roy Stubbs of Provo, Utah, and you'll see him later, Jack Dempsey. Fella oh, used to spar with as a boy. <laughs> Round two, Jack Dempsey. Memories of a teenage boy wandering through the western states taking fights for as little as two dollars and a half in every kind of ring, from local opera houses to back rooms of saloons. Right, Jack? Right. You never really were a hobo, were you, Jack? The press used to say hobo, but actually, <coughs> what were you? I think I was a hobo. I must have been. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, you, you moved I, uh, from place to I place. I wrote a few rocks. Yes, and you <laughs> picked peaches, you cut timber, yeah. you were a miner, a circus roustabout, I think a construction worker, too. That's right. And always, most of your earnings you send home to mom. You sure didn't have any money. You sure didn't have any uh, money to send home after our second fight, Jack, back in 1915. There's a voice you haven't heard in 30 years, Jack. Critics have said that your two fights with this man were as ferocious as any in the history of boxing. Here from Costa Mesa, California, is Johnny Sudenberg. Coming to the house. Right. Two fights, one at Provo, one at... Uh... Goldfield, one at Provo. Right. That's right. How much did you get for the second fight, Johnny? Well, the winner was to take, uh, get $100. The more was run away with the money. The winner take all. <laughs> you, never, you never got a cent. You never got a cent out of that, huh? And this for one of the most brutal fights of all time. Johnny Sudenberg, and you'll see Jack again and all the rest of the gang at a party in his honor at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel where we've all been staying. Right after the show, you'll I'm see still Jack. Still looking for that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> He's still looking for that Shake hands with Jack. That'll go on. Round three, Jack. The years of... <laughs> I stand back every time it goes off, lad. The years of promise of developing fighting style, sharpening your attack, Where'd you uh, get that sudden death rush at the opening bell? Well, I think I tried to, to practice and get rid of them as soon as I could. I got to have a, you know, a lot of little fellas to work with me. Brother Bernie kind of gave you the that's feeling right, about that, didn't that's he? That's right. My brother Johnny, and of course all my brothers were into whatever I did. How about that bobbing, weaving style that made you so hard to hit? Well, that was my brother Bernie. He taught me that. And so step by step, fight by fight, ever more and more, you train your sights on your dream, the championship of the world. Right. It was about this time in 1917 that a great sportsman began to take notice of Jack. Yes, Jack is one of the four Dempsey children uh, still living from Santa Monica, California, your brother, Joe Dempsey. Here's Joe. <laughs> uh, as you know, Jack, uh, Florence and Elsie uh, uh, aren't feeling well, but they're at their TV sets at home watching. Here's Joe Dempsey right here. Here, Joe. Who was this great showman you mentioned, Joe? Uh, that was Tex Rickard. Yes. Uh, he wanted to find an opponent for uh, 
Just Willard, who was the heavyweight champion of the world. I see. And he didn't figure Jack was quite ready at that time. So to prove that, you are ready, Jack. During the next two years, you belt your way through the biggest and best heavyweights in the country. 23 fights, winning 20 of them by knockouts, 16 of them in the first round. What a record. And during the uh, First World War years, Joe, well, during the First World War, they put Jack in 4A because he was uh, taking care of his mother, father, and an old brother and two sisters, and he put on exhibition bouts with the benefit of the war. He certainly did. Now, listen to this, Jack. Listen to this voice. Jack and I met in uh, July 27, 1918 in Harrison, New Jersey. There's a fight you'll always remember, Jack. And here's the man who faced you in the ring that climactic day, Fred Fulton, now of Park Rapids, Minnesota. This was a rugged fight, too, brother. Undoubtedly, some of you watching tonight who, who saw this, this famous fight, here is one of the, the, the hardest hitters ever to enter the ring. Why was this fight, uh, come up under the ring microphone, boys, why was this fight so important to both of you, Fred? Well, I think the winner of this fight, no doubt, was to fight Jess Willard for the world's heavyweight title. Jack right? said it, huh, Fred? That's right, he said it probably. <laughs> and, but there was some other reason that Jack wanted well, Jack to win. Jack needed the money. Yes, well, uh, if I remember right, I bought my mother a little home. Yes. And I paid five or five hundred dollars down. I had to have this money to pay the rest of the mortgage off. I didn't, it was just too bad. <laughs> Is that <laughs> right, Joe? That's right. That that, was and a, now, uh, how did the fight uh, uh, come out, Fred? Well, it would have been... Uh, Probably a little different if Jack gave me time to get off my stool. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knocked me out in 18 seconds, and it took 10 seconds to come, you know, so I didn't have very much of a fight. But One of the shortest uh, knockouts in the As long as I lost, I sure was glad I lost to Jack then. Well, thank you very One much. One of the greatest Fred. fighters I knew of. I want to say I had a lot of admiration for you. He was thank a great you. fighter, and you were my friend. And believe me, it was what uh, you men done for me that made me champion. It wasn't Jack right. Dempsey. What, the what did you do with the money, Jack? Well, I took that money and paid off on my mother's loan. This is one of the biggest hands in the fight game ever. Thank you, Joe Dempsey. Brother Joe, you'll see Fred and Jack a little later. Now, boy, I mean, to do your life in a half hour, Jack, is Ohio. Okay, here we go. Awaking memories of Toledo, Ohio. There's the bell on Independence Day, 1919, 37 years ago. If ever there was a Jack the Giant Killer, Jack Dempsey was that boy that day. A pal of your earlier fighting days. Who was at ringside uh, with you that memorable day? Joe Benzo. Yes, sir. And later fights of yours was in your corner, an outstanding lightweight and welterweight himself here from New York City, Joe Benjamin. <laughs> Joey, come on over here. Stand up, Sam. Uh, tell us about that uh, championship fight in 1919, will oh, you, Joe? how can I forget that fight? It was all Dempsey that day. All Dempsey, but well, it was a gay man. The first round, he was down six times. Just Willie. Yeah, just Willie, yeah. And was saved by the bell. In the second round, he had a terrific lacing, and how he ever came out for the third, nobody knows. The fourth, just before the fourth round, the gong sounded for the fourth round, in comes the sponge from their corner, and it was a new heavyweight champion of the world, our Jack Dempsey. You bet. Thank you, Joe Benjamin. You'll see Jack right after the show. Yeah. Oh. Round five. Don't a new and golden era in Fiskiana. Don't forget to bring some OFC over to the party. <laughs> How many times did you defend your championship, Jack? <laughs> I uh, think it was five times. Is that right? I think six, Jack. Six. Yeah. Yeah. First, September 8, 1920, count them, Benton Harbor, Michigan. <laughs> Billy Miske, the winner and still heavyweight champion of the world, Jack Dempsey, by a knockout in the third. <laughs> December 14, 1920, Madison Square Gardens, New York, Billy Brennan, the winner, Dempsey, by a knockout in the sixth round. <laughs> July 2nd, 1921, Jersey City, New Jersey. Georges Carpentier of Paris, French. Yes, Jack, the voice of the gallant Frenchman who was heavyweight champion of Europe and light heavyweight champion of the world. And who with you do the first million dollar game in history here from Paris, France, Georges Carpentier. <laughs> How 
How long did the fight go, Georges Carpentier? I think it lasted uh, four rounds. And then a left, a terrific left. Come. Yeah, to your midsection? To my midsection. And followed by the right on the jaw. <laughs> Georges, I never forget the second round. Pretty good, too. Aha. You're not just a saying that. <laughs> yes. Well, George, and then, of course, you couldn't... Uh, you tried well, to get I, up. I did my very best to get up, you but I, was, I couldn't do it. It was wonderful. Three, I, I'm sorry. George, I not point you, the sports writer said that you would have beaten anyone in the world that day except Jack Dempsey. What do you do now, George Carpentier? Oh, now I'm running a place in Paris, a restaurant and a bar. I'm doing well, Fine. and I'm also commentating the boxing fight in Europe. Where is your restaurant? Huit Boulevard de la Madeleine, Paris. Eight. Well, <laughs> probably... <laughs> we'll be over there. Good luck, George Carpentier. Yeah, You're coming here all the way from Paris. Grand means a lot to Jack. Jack. July 4th, 1923, Shelby, Montana. Tommy Gibbons, the Manassa Muller, wins in a 15-round decision. September 14, 1923, Polo Grounds, New York. Name is Roy Angel Firpo, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Yes, Jack, the gladiator, whom you knocked down six times in the first round, who came back to knock you out of the ring in that same first round, the wild bull of the Pampas from Argentina, here is Louis Angel Firpo. In 1923. I think I win. <laughs> Jack coming back in time. What did you think? He climbed back through the in rope time. in time. What did you think, Jack? Well, I thought he was terrific. I've always loved Louis, and I think he's loved me. As a matter of fact, I was down in South America about two years ago, and he had 15,000 people there to a luncheon for Jack Dempsey. No, and kidding. I thought it was terrific. Well, now, you won by a knockout in the second round, but uh, Louis Perpo gave you the most startling moment in your ring career. Isn't that right, Jack? Well, when I boxed Fort Louis, I didn't know whether I was in a ring or a foot race. Matter of fact, I'd forgotten all about the fight until I saw it the next day. After that first punch flag up, and I got knocked out of the ring, that was it. Well, we want to thank you very much, Louis oh, Perpo, one of the well. great heavyweights of our time. Thank you, thank you very much. September 23rd, Philadelphia. It's a rainy night as you face Gene Tunney, the pride of the Marines. You're 31, Jack, old for a fighter. It's been three years since you last defended your championship. You've been married, you've been... Well, Gene Tunney, regardless of what they tell you, was a great champion, a great fighter, and a great friend. I admire him, and he won it on the level, and that's all I can say. 1927, September 22nd, Chicago. You're the contender now, Jack, in the ring again with Gene Tunney, now the champ. This is the most controversial fight of the century, as you lose a decision. How much difference did that long count make, Jack? Well, it didn't make any difference to me. I got the best of it. In other words, I got the break. A lot of people who saw that fight still think I won it. As long as I can keep them thinking that, I still say I got a great uh -huh. break, and Gene Tunney got a tough break. How about that for the heart of a great, great guy? <laughs> Unfortunately, Gene Tunney just couldn't be with you here tonight, but he sends you this message, Jack. Though Jack lost the championship to me, I still think of him as the champion, the best ever, the noblest Roman of them all, Gene Tunney. There you go. I'll keep that in here for you, and I'll give it to you after the show. Tops as a fighter, Jack, your popularity and defeat reaches even greater heights. As vaudeville partners, Jack and I started where most of them hoped to end up someday. That's the Palace Theater in New York City. Your old vaudeville partner of the late 20s from Chicago, here's Al Bordy. Come along, Al. <laughs> Many people saw you two together at the Palace and all over the country. Al, bring your old pal over here. You wowed him at the Palace, I know, but you can tell us something, Al Bordy, about Jack. 
that the audience never knew. Well, I think uh, his generosity to, to his fellow fellows that he knew. He'd sit down every Friday and write checks, Ralph, till his arm got tired. And no one ever knew anything about it and didn't want anyone to know. And then Christmas time, he'd go and get dressed up in a costume and find the poorest family that he possibly could find and the largest family and distribute all the gifts all by himself. He's still the greatest in the world to me. Thank you, Al Bordy of Chicago. Thanks, Al. In World War II, Jack, you served with the Coast Guard. In what capacity? I was commander in the Coast Guard. Yes. Uh, you were director of physical training program there, were you not? It's Manhattan Beach. You circle the globe to all the outlying bases, strengthening the morale of your fighting men, and are actually in the forefront of the landing at Okinawa. Every ounce of your energy, every beat of your heart is in this effort. But when you're alone in faraway places, your thoughts are always with two little girls. Your daughters, by your marriage to Hannah Williams, Joan and Barbara. Here they are with your two granddaughters, Joan, Mrs. Dennis O'Flaherty, and here's uh, Denise. Yeah, come on. Here's Lisa's grandma. Here is Joan. There we go. And here is Mrs. Jack McMillan. This is Barbara and Kimberly Ann. Come on, Barbara. Come right on up here. Jack, face the camera over here so they can see this. <laughs> this is your life now, Jack Dempsey. With your daughters and their families, somehow it's hard for us to think of the Manasseh Muller as a grandfather, Jack, because in our hearts, you'll always be the champ. Now, we know that Sam Wiesenthal, the Hollywood producer, is planning to make a picture based on your career, Jack, Sam Wiesenthal. That's in the immediate future. Now, Jack, to begin with, Chris, has uh, asked Marshall Jewelers of New York City to custom design for each of your daughters these beautiful gold charm bracelets. See, uh, this is for Barbara and Joan, and for you, Jack. Marshall has made this very handsome cufflink and tie bar, and uh, this is specially designed money clip. In addition, Jack, Crest will see to it that you receive a complete film of this uh, uh, program tonight, along with a 16 millimeter Bell and Howell sound projector and camera. Now, I'm sure, Almost everyone who's ever visited the Great White Way in New York City has stopped in at the famous Broadway restaurant which bears the name Jack Dempsey. I know I have many times. Well, Jack Crest would like to display these lasting tributes to your life there in your restaurant. First, beautifully encased and appropriately inscribed the gloves that you used when you fought George Carpentier, July 2nd, 1921, and the shoes you wore in the Louis Furpo fight, September 14th, 1923, and second, this life-size oil painting, watch the monitor, of Jack Dempsey, the greatest fighter of them all, by David Immerman, one of America's leading portrait artists. That can be in the restaurant, too. Everybody in the world can go into your restaurant to see it. Now, finally, Jack, about that picture, based on your life, that Sam Wiesenthal is producing. You still with me, pal? Yes, we know how important it is to you that exactly the right person plays the part of Jack Dempsey. And so, here's what we're going to do. If you know, ladies and gentlemen, if you know someone who resembles Jack Dempsey, send a picture along with his height, weight, and age. A man between the ages of 25, let's say 20 and 25, weight between 185, 190 pounds, six feet to six feet, two inches in height. Send a picture and uh, your description to Jack Dempsey, Box 301, Hollywood 28, California. No photographs can be returned. This is your life, Jack Dempsey, former world heavyweight boxing champion. Your mother taught you to live for the golden rule and keep it going. May your life be an inspiration to young people everywhere. Good night. God bless you. Thank you, and thanks to all you people. Say hello, sir.